keep ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. 1883, written in aid of the Bertholdi statue. What we found in the last year as we've been thinking more and more about Emma Lazarus and her legacy is that a lot of people really don't know who she is. She's most famous for writing a poem called The New Colossus, which is now inside the Statue of Liberty. And as we were exploring her biography, we were able to see that she led such a complex life that actually sheds light on the complications that I think we are living through today. So we thought looking at how Emma dealt with these issues would be inspiring for a new generation. How did Emma act in the world? And how did she express herself and shine light on issues important to her? This poem is saying, no matter where you're from or what your circumstances, there is no such thing as a good immigrant or a bad immigrant. Everyone deserves to be here. And I think that that idea, that very idea, is radical. It was radical then, and I think it's radical now. Lazarus was born in New York City in 1849. She was a fifth generation American from a very well-known, established Jewish Sephardic family. She grew up for the much of her life in a beautiful brownstone on 14th Street. She was the fourth of seven children, so she grows up in a lively household, one in which education was valued, so she most likely was tutored in her library. She spoke French and German. She did translation from French and German literature. And by the time she was 16, her father was able to pull together a 200-page volume of her poems. It's very uncommon to have someone be able to write so much, but she kind of lived and breathed letters. New York changed a great deal from her childhood to her adulthood. From 1840 to 1860, the population more than doubled. You have a lot of people moving from rural areas to the city. More and more people are working in factory jobs, and there's an awareness at the time of inequality. There are some people living in quite beautiful homes, and others who are living in, in tenements. And in addition, you have immigrants moving in. So all of these things are at play in the world that Emma grew up in. One thing that happens in the course of her lifetime is that there's actually an uptick in anti-Semitism. There are people who are saying Jews as a class, Jews as a whole, are X, Y, and Z. And so there were a lot of stereotypes, just as there were stereotypes of many immigrant groups at the time. She was always the Jewess, wherever she went. Even her best friends spoke about her as one of the strivers. There was coded language and not so coded language when they were writing among themselves. And we have those letters because her friends were famous people. So we can see what they were saying behind her back. And it's, it's not pretty. She had been writing about Jews. She had been writing about her own ancestors. And when the pogroms happened in Eastern Europe in 1881, Emma Lazarus was already churning with the questions, questions about how to be a modern Jew and what it meant to live in two worlds. Emma Lazarus was the first modern Jew in the sense that she was the first famous American Jew who had to invent her own way of being Jewish. Her family had been in New York for several generations, and by the time she was born, her family wasn't necessarily practicing every element of Jewish law. 
We know from conversations with her friends that she observed the holiday of Passover, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. But for her, first and foremost was kind of the connection she had to Jewish people that she achieved in part through her study. She read lots of history. And also the sense of connection she had to Jews, even if they came from very different class backgrounds or they immigrated from different places. A lot of other people in the established Jewish community could have said, oh, they speak another language, they celebrate the religion in a different way, that's not really us. But she felt a sense of connection and felt obligated to help newly arrived Jewish immigrants. It was, we could say, a, a life of tikkun olam, a life of repairing the world, a life of a Jewish mission, but it wasn't a life of religious observance. So she had to think outside the box. And I think her way of life resonates with our contemporaries. In many ways, Emma was always an activist. And I think in some ways that activism comes out through her poems. But in the more traditional sense of what it means to be an activist, I think that really gets going in the 1880s. Emma Lazarus responds to the arrival of many East European Jews who are coming in large numbers. They're fleeing persecution in Russia, and the existing agencies don't have enough space to house these refugees as they arrive. And they're brought over to Ward's Island in the East River, and Emma goes to visit them there. Now, she can't speak to them, she doesn't know their language, but somehow she's able to connect to them. So she threw herself into the cause of welcoming and caring for and educating and finding jobs for Eastern European Jewish immigrants. Even more importantly, she became an advocate in her writing. Emma Lazarus is most known for the New Colossus. But she has other writings as well, and there's a phrase that she wrote that has been used by other activists, which is, until we are all of us free, we are none of us free. That's a call for people to take responsibility for others and to kind of understand that you yourself aren't really free if there are people who aren't free. When we think about proving one's worthiness to be accepted, into this great nation. Emma Lazarus was saying, it does not matter. We welcome any and all. The story goes that a woman named Constance Carey Harrison went to Emma and said, I'm collecting poems, I'm collecting drawings in order to auction and raise money for this beautiful statue that the French have sent over. And Emma says, I don't write on command. <laughs> and Constance Carey Harrison says, but Emma, you know, think of the refugees you're, you're working with. Think of how they'll see the statue in the harbor as their boat comes in. And the story goes that Emma says, oh, I'll do it. And two days later, comes back with the new Colossus. And that was the occasion for writing this poem in 1883. And right after it was written and read at this event, it was published in January in a kind of small circulation magazine, mentioned a few times, and then it sort of fell out of view. So put the clock ahead to 1886. By then, Emma Lazarus is quite ill, and she's in England, and she decides instead of writing poems, she just doesn't have it in her, she's going to edit her poems. So she writes this manuscript of her poems and she puts that poem first. She knew it was her best poem. She knew it was the poem that would be her legacy. After Emma Lazarus's death, the new Colossus sort of fell out of the limelight until 1903, when her friend Georgina Schuyler was looking for a way to memorialize her and came up with the idea of making a bronze plaque and affixing it to the Statue of Liberty, where it can still be seen. Over the years, I think the poem has become a lot more complex. Is it 
long and inclusive of every single struggle we've ever seen in this nation? No, but I think that there's a kernel of truth for everyone to sort of identify with something in that poem. Knowing something about the context in which Emma Lazarus lived and wrote, I think it helps us to see what a remarkable poem it is and what one person can do to change the conversation. So what we want you to do is think about an issue that's important to you and write about it. We want you to respond to the question, if you could write a poem for the Statue of Liberty today, what would it be? Okay, so we went to the American Jewish Historical Society and we learned um, all about Emma Lazarus and her poem called The New Colossus. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to think about what you want your message to be for newly arriving immigrants or the message. I firmly believe that young people are ready and willing and completely able to stand on that pedestal and give us the new Emma Lazarus or the newly envisioned version of Emma Lazarus. We just have to listen. For all her storied strength, Lady Liberty weeps as she stands, as what she symbolizes is crushed to dust in politicians' hands. Her people ignore her and refuse her protection and allow her glistening beige skin to be tarnished by hate. They allow her hope to fade to a melancholy silence and her skin to melt into muddy green, losing its shine. Here your words are not twisted to insults but crafted to songs. Here the mighty arguments of peace are indestructible. Our differences unify our love. Well, let one thing be clear. We welcome you to enter here with open arms. Though some may allocate for you to fail, the foundation of this country will prevail. So fear not of what is unknown, and welcome to America, your newfound home. <laughs>